Welcome collectors and diecast enthusiasts. Thank you so much for joining me for a, another new episode of Diecast Emporium. In today's review, we are going to be taking a look at another older NZG 150th scale cat model. Specifically, this is the Caterpillar D9N track type tractor or bulldozer. This was the dozer that came right before the Cat D9R, which was a very successful machine in its own right. So let's begin the video by taking a look at the packaging. As you can see, it says Cat, Cat D9N, track type tractor in a variety of different languages. You have an outline drawing of it on one side, and the same thing on this side with the addition of 150th scale. Underneath, you can see that this is an officially licensed product from Caterpillar. The NZG model logo. The article number for this is number 298, and as you can see, this was manufactured in Germany. This specific model was made in the mid-1990s. So, with that information out of the way, let's go ahead and take this thing out of the box. Mine comes in a styrofoam former, which is a little bit different from a lot of the older NZG pieces. Some of them do come in this styrofoam-like packaging, especially some of the later releases, uh, but a lot of them do come in just some typical cardboard. You can see there's some bubble wrap in mine, and also occasionally on some of these dozers, particularly the D9Ns, D9Rs, as well as the DH, you'll find this little addition here protecting the ripper. So you pull that out, very carefully grab onto your dozer, and the other thing you may find in your box, of course, is the NZG officially licensed tag seen here. With that done, your model is complete out of the box. Okay, let's begin the model's review as we always do by taking a look at the detail and decals. A lot of these older NZG pieces, obviously, they are not going to have the amount of detail uh, that today's models have, but to a lot of us, especially the older collectors, that is what makes these models desirable in their own right. These D9Ns and some of the later D9Rs, they came in a variety of different paint liveries, decals, as well as different tracks. This has the what I refer to as the skinny rubber tracks. Uh, there's also a linked rubber track that comes on this. Uh, and also some collectors obviously later on switched these rubber tracks out for metal tracks. On the back, you can see the Caterpillar red line decaling on the back. D9N, Cat right here, and Caterpillar on the front. That is all for the decals, but... Now moving on to the details, you can see on this blade, it does have some detailing on the blade as well as on the top of it. Your cylinders for the blade, they are plastic, at least your jackets for the cylinders are plastic, and they are slightly off color, but they're good enough for government work, as they say. You also have two lights that, again, are molded into the casting, a single exhaust, and a single air cleaner. On this side of the machine, you can see that the engine is somewhat visible. All of these, to my knowledge, were modeled with the engine visible and obviously not closed off. Inside the cab, you can see a seat, and that's just about it. There is a little bit of anti-slip outside of the cab that, again, molded into the metal casting. You can probably see that there. The tracks themselves have about the most basic detailing that you could possibly find on it. However, there is a little bit of detailing on the uh, the high drive sprocket. As for your blade, again, mostly a die cast piece with the exception of this cylinder jacket here. Turning our attention now to the ripper, this is a single shank ripper. Again, mostly all die cast metal. But you can see that four different cylinder jackets or covers, again, those are uh, in plastic as well and slightly off color. Taking a look underneath the bulldozer, here we can see some information such as NZG model. The model number, as I said before, 1 to 50 scale, made in Germany. And again, item number 298. You can see that the tracks, again, have almost no detailing on them at all, but at least there's a little bit of detailing to give you the illusion that these are actually tracks and not just oversized large bands. Underside of the blade, again, you can see the detailing of this, which is nice to see some casted in detail. All right, let's turn our attention now to functionality. For functionality, obviously, if you are careful, you can make the tracks roll by hand. 
but you got to have a pretty movable surface for these to roll on a surface with friction. Uh, obviously, if you apply down on them, they will not move on a smooth surface, such as the review area. Moving on now to the blade functionality. What you want to be careful of on these models that are what I consider vintage models, models that are over 25 years old, be careful when you're operating the cylinder, so take your time. Mine goes up to a height of here, which again, I would say is pretty acceptable. In fact, when you scale it out, I would say that's somewhat reminiscent to perhaps the max height of what the real machine could achieve. We can also tilt the blade a little bit forward without forcing the cylinders and risking breaking anything. And also, conversely, you can tilt it back to about here. So for functionality of the blade, again, nothing negative to uh, complain about there. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. Let's bring it down to its lowest, most extremity without forcing anything. It appears as though it will sit about level with the surface of the table. You can tilt it forward a little bit if you want, again, to achieve the illusion that the machine is parked and level with the ground. As for it going down below itself, I can't really get mine to do much of that. But again, if you want to get yours and uh, attempt to be a little harder on the cylinders than I'm willing to do, that's completely up to you. All right, let's turn around to the back of the machine again, taking a look at the Ripper. In my humble opinion, I don't think this is the most impressive looking Ripper I've ever seen on a model, again, even considering its age. But let's see if it will drop down below itself. And again, without forcing anything, it will go below itself. And it appears as though you can move it out, seen here, as well as back towards the machine seen there. So if you did want to pose this machine ripping into your diorama or onto your finest furniture, you can achieve it with no problem with the CAT D9N. So overall, in conclusion, this is a fantastic vintage model by NZG. I have become quite fond of these older CAT models, specifically from the 1970s all the way up to the mid-1990s when NCG had a CAT license. If you are a fan of the D9 in any iteration, whether it's some of the older D9s, all the way up to today's CAT D9 Dozer or the D9T, uh, I definitely would have to recommend picking up one of these. You guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I am Tommy with Diecast Emporium. Thank you all so very much for watching. I appreciate it. If you have not already, please hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another upload. Until next time, take care, be safe, be well. I will see you in the next review.